President Ferdinand R. Marcos is set to sign an executive order reserving idle government lands for housing projects. Malacanang said the EO will implement Section 24 of Republic Act No. 11201, which mandates several agencies to identify idle state lands suitable for housing and rural development. More than 16,000 hectares of government land will be inspected. The president said using these assets will ensure flexibility in deciding which land should be used for socialized housing. Meantime, Marcos is set to meet with banks and financial institutions to assist the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. The president is targeting to build 1 million housing units per year or 6 million by the end of his term to ease the country's housing backlog. Last October, several banking institutions expressed support for the administration's housing program. House Speaker Martin Romualdez said the lessons learned from the tragic experience during the super typhoon Yolanda in 2013 serves as a guide to the country's calamity response. It also highlights the Filipinos' capacity to unite and help one another during times of crisis. During the commemoration of the 9th anniversary of Yolanda, Romualdez paid tribute to the brave souls of the first responders who put the lives of others above their own. He said the resilience is born in part by their sacrifices towards our fellow citizens in times of calamities. And he believes that the Filipinos have fully recovered from it. From the recent onslaught of tropical storm Paeng, the House of Representatives raised over 75 million pesos in cash and in-kind donations for the affected families. The lower house, in a resolution filed by Romualdez and other house leaders, also recently honored five rescue workers who died in the performance of their sworn duties. Help the country improve its international image as a nation with high respect for press freedom. This is the call of Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri to the members of the media during a recent press conference. Zubiri made his appeal after murder charges were filed against two officials of the Bureau of Corrections and several others in relation to the killing of veteran broadcaster Percy Lapid. He said that despite the incident, freedom of the press still exists in the country. Based on the 2022 World Press Freedom Index by Paris-based Reporters Without Borders, the country slipped nine spots to 147 out of 180 countries. Zubiri said the country is better than other nations where people could not freely express their opinion. He said no one prevented the media from reporting the case of Percy Lapid killing as well as the filing of murder charges against two officials of the Bureau of Corrections. Senator Risa Ontiveros on Monday urged her colleagues to immediately pass a measure that will better protect workers in the gig economy. This after a delivery rider was found dead while resting on his motorcycle in Pasig City over the weekend. The senator asked delivery company Lala Move to help the family of delivery rider Noel Escote who died while on duty. She said Escote's death must be a wake-up call to lawmakers to immediately act on bills that will uphold the rights and welfare of gig economy workers. Last month, Ontiveros filed Senate Bill No. 1373 or the Protectado ng Online Workers, Entrepreneurs, Riders at Raquetera Act. This seeks to protect gig economy workers such as independent delivery riders and freelancers. Ontivero said measures that could protect gig economy workers include their enrollment in social protection programs such as PhilHealth, SSS, and Pag-ibig. She also proposed that online platforms that hire independent contractors shall be held liable for injuries sustained while on duty. And that is the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. We are also shown on the social media pages of the Office of the Press Secretary and on Radio Pilipinas RP1. Stay tuned for more news updates. I am William Theo. We tell stories that inspire change.